Okay, chapter 10-2, which is on page 229. Um, we're going to discuss journalizing cash payments into a cash payments journal. So a cash payments journal is the second of the special journals that Omni uses. Um, whenever we make a cash payment, so we're going to write a check, whether it be to pay somebody back. In the previous chapter, we bought merchandise from vendors. Maybe we now have to pay them back. We're going to write them a check. So any accounts payable could be affected. Um, anything we write a check for, for expenses, uh, withdrawals, um, purchase merchandise with cash, etc. Now, 10-2 and 10-3 are going to, they're going to go together. So both 10-2 and 10-3 go through just transactions on paying cash and recording it into the cash payments journal. So just be aware of that. So we're going to learn today how to record only cash payments into a cash payments journal. Um, there are special amount columns in the cash payments journal and we had talked about that in the last chapter and the two special um, amount columns that are in a cash payments journal are accounts payable debit and cash credit and you're gonna learn about here uh, that in just a second we always know that the account cash is affected so if it's we paid cash it goes in the cash payments journal um, the source document is gonna be C for check and there are two general amount columns. There's the general debit and also the general credit column in the cash payments journal to record uh, general accounts that are not accounts payable or, yeah, are not accounts payable. So let's take a look at a cash payments journal. Again, date, account title that is affected. We already know cash is affected. So whatever other account is affected would just be recorded on one line, not two as in the general journal. We have the check number. Um, we have our general debit and credit columns. We have our special amount column, which is the uh, accounts payable is debited. Again, if we're paying somebody back, we're going to debit that accounts payable account now because we owe them less, or maybe we owe them nothing. And then always cash credit. There's always going to be something in cash credit. Always. There's two accounts affected. One of them has to be cash if it's in this cash payments journal. So that's why you'll always have an amount in cash credit. Um, so let's take a look at purchased merchandise for cash. So 10-1 we looked at purchased merchandise on account. Now we're actually we're gonna write them a check immediately for the merchandise that we're purchasing. So again our cost um, account or our purchases account that you see here is debited. It's the cost of running our business. We bought something for $575 with check number 290. The accounts affected, again, are purchases and cash, always cash, because we purchased for cash. Um, how has each classification changed? The cost account or purchases account is debited, and the asset account, which cash is an asset, is going to be credited. We're decreasing our cash account. And again, we're going to write that on the debit side. Cash is always credited. So as we take a look at this, uh, filling this out, we're going to put the, the date here. The account that's affected, so it looks like here we have purchased merchandise for cash, um, check number 290, $575. All right, that's the debit amount. We're using the general amount column. It's purchases. We know that purchases is debited. Always know that cash is credited, so that's going to go here. Again, we purchased merchandise for cash, purchases, debit. We're increasing our cost account, our purchases account. And then we have supplies. We're actually buying office supplies. That could include, again, um, toilet paper, pencils, staplers, paper for your copy machine, uh, supplies for your office. Uh, check number 292, $34. And then we have that there. Always going to be cash as credited. Okay. Next transaction is buying supplies for cash. November 5th, we paid cash for office supplies for $34, just like we looked at here, $34. Now we're actually going to go over that uh, transaction. Check number 292. We're going to debit supplies office. This is an asset account. Okay, It's something that we have, we own. It's worth something. Even though it's supplies, they will be used. Um, however, we have it. So two asset accounts are being affected. 
debit this asset account because we bought supplies. We gained supplies and we paid for it with cash, so we're going to credit cash. Asset increased, asset decreased. Keeps the assets plus uh, um, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity into effect from back in chapter one. Um, here we go. Cash payment on account. So now we're paying somebody that we bought merchandise from and we bought it on account. Remember, it could be a 30 day period. Maybe it's a three month period and we're going to pay them over that course of that three months. Um, we're going to write the date. We're going to write the vendor name, the accounts payable account. Check number accounts payable debit. Again, cash credit. Okay, this accounts payable, when we debit an accounts payable account, we means that we owe them less. We're decreasing that account. It's a liability. So when we buy something on account, the accounts payable increases, but that's a credit. Carries a normal credit balance. When we pay them back, we're going to decrease it or debit it. So this is what a cash payment on account, we're paying somebody back, that's what this looks like here, the transaction. Finally, we have a cash payment of an expense. We have our expenses every month uh, and periodically. Here's an advertising expense, maybe something that we put an ad in the, for the paper, radio announcement, TV ad, anything like that, magazine. We have our check number, 296. We're going to debit that expense. Remember, debits, or I'm sorry, expenses always carry a debit balance. There is no special amount column for expenses. There is no special amount a column for purchases. It's just accounts payable in, in cash. So we're going to have to put that in the general debit column. And then, of course, we're going to credit cash. So reviewing the four transactions that we went over in 10-2, we purchased merchandise with cash. And this is what purchase merchandise with cash looks like. We bought supplies with cash. We made a cash payment on account to pay somebody back. Accounts payable, always cash. And finally, we made an expense payment. We paid for expenses, general debit, cash credit. Make sure you're familiar with the cash payments journal and what um, accounts are affected in the cash payments journal and also what the general amount columns um, what, th what those are and again those are that general debit general credit anything that's not an accounts payable basically goes into the general debit or general credit column of the cash payments so that's 10-2 let's take a look at um, quickly now this is gonna look funny because I gotta turn my computer sideways um, I can't remember how to do it I think it's control alt right arrow all right, no, hold on, let me get to it first. I don't want to start this over, so you're going to have to be patient here. There we go. See how it's sideways here? So I'm going to I'm going to do it sideways. Control alt side. There we go. This is um right here. This is really hard. Um this is the work together. So let me get down here and scroll up. There we go. There. So work together 10 2. This is on page. 232, I'm sorry, 233. Um, it says uh, the cash payments journal for elite draperies is given in the working papers, etc. Using the current year, journalize these transactions on page 10 of a cash payments journal. So again, we're going to, man, this is hard. <laughs> page 10, you see up here. Okay. Um, October 1st, purchase merchandise for cash. Uh, again, we're going to put this with check number 321. Purchases account is debited for $810. And of course, uh, every amount is going to be recorded in the cash account, credited. On October 7th, we paid cash for office supplies. Office supplies, 
again is going to be debited in the general debit column fifty two dollars and again of course it's going to be in the cash credit on October 11th we paid cash on account to design fabrics so we're basically going through each and every of those transactions that we just covered all four um, we're paying design fabrics back you can see the check number you can see the amount here is five hundred and sixty three dollars and always cash credit finally on October 17th we paid cash for the telephone bill the telephone bill is a utility spent expense just like your heating bill or your electric bill um, so we're gonna record that in the general debit column of $85 check number 324 and you're gonna have your cash credit of $85 now that that is all of the work together for 10-2 so when you do the on your own for 10-2 it's also you're going to include 10-3 and also the application problems will go along with that. Okay. Let me go back to normal. And that is it. That's 10-2. Uh, again, refer back to this with if you have any questions. Watch us at home. Come in with questions and work on this work uh, in class.